Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us tonight for our third episode of Advanced Parole Voices and it's the live edition. Today with us we have Angelica and I'm going to let her introduce herself. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, for sure. Um, thank you for having me here. She's here all the way from Utah. So Angelica, if you want to share a little bit about yourself, yeah. um, you can start there. So thank you for inviting me and I'm so happy to be here. So my name is Angelica Guzman um, and and um, I'm from Utah, as you say. Uh, mm -hmm. Originally, I'm from Mexico. Um, I was brought to the U.S. when I was 10, mm -hmm. so it's been a while since I've been here. Um, I've, uh, I'm a DACA recipient. I have uh, taken advantage of dance parole before, and I have also suffered the immense, um, immense impact that um, the lack of advance parole had. So it's, uh, it's an honor for me to be here. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Um, I know you mentioned already that you had a parole yeah. before, yeah, sure. um, but I also know that you applied recently for yes. advance parole and yeah. it was denied, right? Yes, that's um, So I just want you to share a little bit about your experience mm -hmm. of what it was to have advance parole, why you applied, mm -hmm. and where did you go? Yeah, so when DACA was first introduced mm -hmm. uh, and they um, said that advance parole was a possibility and they let us know the grounds that you could get advance parole mm -hmm. on, um, I immediately knew that there was something that I wanted to take advantage of. Yeah. Um, as a political science major and as an international studies major, we were required to have an international experience. So um, I changed my academics um, so that I can fulfill this um, international experience. And I had the opportunity to go to Germany uh, wow. for three, four weeks the first time. Uh -huh. And advanced parole the first time went without a hitch. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, not recommended by a lot of lawyers who yeah. didn't know how it was going to be taken yeah. by customs. And it was not a fun experience coming back into the country because mm. um, I was taken into a room, um, I was interviewed, and I was um, on that room for about an hour and a half wow. um, while they figure out what DACA was because they didn't understand it. Um, so the second time That's went crazy. a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, when I came back, the first time I knew that I wanted to do my, s my um, graduate studies mm -hmm. abroad. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, because they had a great chance to be free and not in a way of being able to travel, but being free in a way that I didn't feel like I needed to keep my head down because of my status. Mm -hmm. um, and so Advanced Parole provided me the opportunity to see other cultures, to see, wow, uh, awesome. to learn more about a country. Yeah. And so the second time went without a hitch as well. Mm -hmm. And even coming back, um, I was literally with uh, Border and Customs mm -hmm. Control for five minutes. And then they let me, wow, they let me in. They awesome. told me, you know, the drill, welcome home. You can go. <laughs> yeah. wow. And so I obviously was very yeah. happy with advanced parole mm -hmm. and it helped me tremendously in uh, deciding what I wanted to do in my professional career. Um, after I came back from my graduate studies, I worked with uh, refugee resettlement mm -hmm. and that was a huge, incredible opportunity that I was uh, lucky enough to take advantage of. Um, yeah. Because I study human rights law and um, European law, I was able to help with resettlement cases. Wow, that's mm -hmm. awesome. So, I mean, that just kind of goes to show how yeah. much in, of an impact yeah. Advanced Pearl has, sure. right? Yeah. Um, and then, so, after you went for the first two times, mm -hmm. you came back, like you said, um, and then I know that you applied one more time. Yes. What was the reason for that and what, what was the... the the end of it. So the reason for applying one more time, even though I knew the situation mm -hmm. and I knew the possibilities of DACA getting rescinded and yeah. when it actually did, I knew what that could possibly mean. And what year was it? So I applied for the, I guess you can call it the third time on 2017 first. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was in 18, 19, I think. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and on 2017, it was a really a matter of luck because La DACA was rescinded um, mm -hmm. a few months um, before I was supposed to get a decision for advance oh, parole. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it was an um, educational opportunity in 2017, but in 2019, it was not only educational, but it was professional. Mm -hmm. And it was hard um, to lose that opportunity because it was a once in a life opportunity. Yeah. What did this mean to you? And what was the loss overall of, of this opportunity? Overall? What, um, what this meant to me was I, um, I took it as I wasn't worthy of mm -hmm. uh, getting advanced parole even though I had demonstrated 
that I wasn't a flight risk and I had taken yeah. advantage of it. Yeah. Um, but also it kind of hurt in the way this administration was treating us. Yeah. Because even though the Ninth Circuit uh, said in grounds for us to um, send in Have applications, yeah. um, we were still getting denied. And so it cost me uh, lost in a work opportunity and professional growth. Um, mm. But it also cost me financial loss. Yeah, of so. course, because yep. you kind of invest all this time, yeah, money, sure. yeah. and energy into mm -hmm. something, and y the result is yeah. like nothing is there. You get nothing. Um, yeah. And you know, I know that ha there has been a lot of conversation mm -hmm. over seeing advanced parole as a loophole. Right. And which is the reason why it really did get like suspended, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What we're trying to say. So, yeah. what do you, what would you tell? somebody who says, well, this is just an opportunity for you to be able to apply for a citizenship or for a green card and not have to leave the country. So what do, what do you tell somebody? I would tell them they're wrong because in most cases, advanced parole is not going to be used mm -hmm. to turn into citizenship or residency. Mm -hmm. In most cases, what we're asking for is for a chance to go after what we want and for a chance to go in my case for graduate stu um, studies that I couldn't afford in this country yeah. just simply because of my immigration status mm -hmm. um, and for a lot of people is a chance to see a dying loved one and it's just human decency to allow that the fact exactly. that we have no documents in this country doesn't make us any less valuable yeah. than anybody else. Yeah, there, there has been so many opportunities that we've all lost abroad. Yeah. Um, and I know that you mentioned a lot about the educational part of mm -hmm. it and um, being able to travel for those reasons. Right. But I don't know if you've ever been faced with an and something happening mm -hmm. in, in your country in Mexico yeah. um, where you felt the need to go but weren't able to? Yeah, well, I mean, before DACA w um, was instated, mm -hmm. my grandmother passed away and um, I wasn't able to be with her. And, you know, it, it's very sad and at the same time I'm very disappointed with myself because yeah. I, I feel like it was a failing on my part not to be with my family at that time yeah. and not to be able to be a support to my mother when mm -hmm. she needed it the most. So yeah. I, I may have not suffered through DACA, but I know the suffering and, and I know the pain that that causes. And right now yeah. my father is in Mexico and I can't mm. see him. So wow. if God forbid something were to happen, I wouldn't be able to do anything. I wouldn't be able to say goodbye. And I know that's a situation that people have been faced with. Yeah. And it's a horrible situation that nobody should be, um, should be I asked mean. to decide. Exactly. whether to stay in a place we call home or to go with your family and to say goodbye to a loved one. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, it's a very difficult situation because yeah. we've been hearing it a lot For with sure. our yeah. recent advanced parole assistance yeah. program mm -hmm. that you were a part of. Yeah. Um, a lot of it was very humanitarian. Mm -hmm. It was like, I need to go home, I need to see my dad. Yeah. Like, he passed mm -hmm. away. Exactly. Um, I also want to mention and let everybody know that um, there is a documentary, Advanced Parole Voices documentary, based on Angelica's story. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to be playing it, I believe, towards the end. Um, so if, and we're also going to have a Q&A. So if you do have qu any questions for her, you can also ask her. Um, but yeah, this documentary is still, we're still working on it. Mm -hmm. And it should be out soon. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. Um, and yeah, just continuing with the conversation, I just wanted to let them know. Um, but overall, I think that, what would you tell somebody? So I, I actually asked this, the previous person I was here, like I've never had the opportunity to travel mm -hmm. with advanced parole um but what would you tell somebody who wants to do it and is really needs the opportunity but but can't go from your experience um i would say that it's worth the risk in mm -hmm. my experience worth the risk of applying it's worth it because mm -hmm. the rewards are amazing mm -hmm. and when when i first took advantage of advanced parole mm -hmm. i was somebody that didn't know other cultures from the ones that I've grown up with and that gave me the chance to see and to figure out what I wanted to do with my life yeah. and so the impact was so great yeah. that after coming back I decided you know what this is what I want to do and this is exactly where I want to do it mm -hmm. and I was unfortunate enough that in Germany and in Europe there was a refugee crisis from Syria mm. that we saw refugee cases wow. firsthand and I could not have done that without advanced parole. 
and it was the amazing the, the the opportunity of a lifetime to be able to do that and to be able to say that I have some studies because I've lived them and yeah. because I was able to do them through this program so yeah that's really awesome because I think a lot of us want to always go back to our home country mm -hmm. but we don't like think about all the other opportunities yeah. because we're so we're missing our, our home and like mm -hmm. we want to go back yeah. but there's also so many opportunities abroad and I don't know if you want to speak a little bit more about like how the culture was in, in Germany, mm -hmm. um, what you learned being there, aside from the educational, mm -hmm. but like what that experience really gave you into your personal life. It gave me um, a different understanding of people who I had um, misjudged to a certain degree mm. because of their history. Yeah. Um, and it gave me the chance to learn from political crises that were happening and also gave me the chance to build a family Mm -hmm. um, that was built from people from many different uh, cultures yeah. and many different nationalities who I still keep in touch with. And we were a team and I was able to call them my German teammates and my <laughs> German family, uh, awesome. even though we were all different, but I wasn't an immigrant to them. I wasn't an mm. undocumented student to them. I was just Angelica who who was good at school and who we could count <laughs> on or something. Yeah. So it gave me the opportunity to escape from that stigma, you know, from being stigmatized, from yeah. being an immigrant, from being a DACA recipient. Wow, that's, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Um, I know that you're also going to be going with us on yeah. our campaign yeah. trip. So this, this November. Yes. Um, and by the way, tomorrow is the last day to apply. If you still want to join us in our DC trip um, to advocate for advanced parole, tomorrow is going to be the last day to apply. Um, but I just want to I just want to thank you for coming with us yeah. first of all um, and what what do you think is so important for us to be there like wh what's the main purpose um, obviously the main purpose is to advocate for advanced yeah. parole but how, how do our voices impact what do you think we Congress? have to have a say in the matter the the arguments that the Supreme Court is going to hear they're about us they're not only about the plaintiffs mm -hmm. in that lawsuit they're all about all of us who have DACA and we have to be there we have to fight because mm -hmm. even if we lose, we fought. And that, I think, it's going to be incredibly important. We have to make sure that they know that we're here and mm -hmm. that they know that if we're going to go down, we're not going to go yeah. out without fighting. Yeah, and um, also, can you just speak a little bit about the importance of us being, being in D.C., yeah. advocating for advanced parole while all of this is also going on? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know... A lot of our advocacy has resulted in advanced parole being placed into yeah. certain um, possible Legislation. legislations. Mm -hmm. um, so can you just uh, talk a little bit on that as well? I think that we give it a face to the yeah. need for advanced parole. I think we give people who, who are afraid to speak mm -hmm. up about their need for advanced parole uh, the chance to be heard. And yeah. I think that we need to also hold the Congress accountable for what they're doing, for the decisions yeah. that they're making, because there's been a lot of chances to fix yeah. this situation and to keep advanced parole, not as advanced parole, but just as a regular uh, freedom that we might right? have. It's and <laughs> it's, uh, I think, the lack of accountability by congressman yeah. and congresswoman um, have made this a little bit difficult, not only with the administration, mm -hmm. but I think we need to hold accountable also Congress and the yeah. Senate for this. Because I know you've probably done like a lot of previous uh, mm -hmm. lobbying mm -hmm. and advocacy and you can you can account to the fact that our voices really do matter yes. while yes. speaking. Do you have any previous experiences in doing this or what is the most accomplished um, advocacy that you think you've done? Well, we, um, I, in Utah, we worked with um, immigrant, um, you know, students mm -hmm. for, um, I remember that there was a time where people didn't know that we could get in-state tuition. And so we yeah. work with that. Yeah. And also we work with the community to let them know that they could and had an opportunity to go to college. Yeah. But there was a movement when I was growing up in Utah mm -hmm. of where we were about to lose our driver's license or our yeah. privilege to yeah. drive. And so I think all the community, we went and we spoke and we marched and we didn't get the result necessarily that we wanted, mm -hmm. but we got the privilege cards, which at least give us a chance to oh. drive and give the community a chance to drive and That's be awesome. part of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think that going and speaking up, it's incredibly important. Uh, yeah. and I just look forward to doing it in Washington again. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. I think that, I mean, overall from my experience too, I can say that 
it really does matter yeah. and it's it, those days are really long and like yeah emotionally draining but overall i think it's really it really does For matter sure. and i just want to invite everybody to if you're interested the link to apply is going to also be in the comment section so if you want to come and join us mm -hmm. um it's really impactful and your voice really does make a yeah. difference um i also want to ask if we have any questions yet for angelica uh no 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 we questions to okay well yeah <laughs> if you want to ask questions please leave them there. um but i also just want to speak a little bit about how important the importance of people's contribution sorry about the dogs barking it happens it's natural <laughs> um but i just want to to highlight the importance of people donating to the campaigns like this mm -hmm. um a lot of our care yep. has been very very from the bottom like mm -hmm. we have pushed and tried and and we've seen a lot of people that have donated to us a lot of people that have been supporting um but i think that in order for us to continue mm -hmm. our work and all of this it's really important that you that are watching us mm -hmm. um donate to yeah. causes like this i think all of us who worked in nonprofits yeah know the importance of donors and of mm -hmm. cultivating them and of making sure that people understand what we're fighting for and yeah. you might think that like five ten bucks doesn't make a difference but mm -hmm. it does i it mean does. obviously when you put several people who donate that amount of money yeah. you get a bigger sum of money and yeah. this is going to just help us keep doing the work that we're yeah. doing you know I uh, like I said November is a very important month for DACA and for advanced mm -hmm. parole but the most important one is going to be when the decision is taken you yeah. know and then we're going to have to be ready for whatever comes because we're going to need to mm -hmm. fight it even harder if, if if that's the case yeah that's we very have true a question um uh, Lili is saying uh will DACA be affected in October 15 of 2019 I'm not sure if it's October or, may, or maybe they mean I no, think November. in November. Can you bring state So, um, I think what what she might mean is that uh, the arguments are in November, and so while we wait to hear arguments, it's not a decision. The decision uh, could be um, handed out between June and when the court takes recess next year. Mm -hmm. So either way, we need to be ready, and it's a great campaign to be a part of because if they know you're present, they know that the decision is going to matter even more. Yeah, thank you. Any more questions? For now, let me see. Um, no, no questions for that. Okay. Um, and I also want to mention that I believe there's a donate button on our Facebook Live. Yep. So if you are interested in donating, you can just click that button and um, that will lead, lead you to straight to our yep. campaign efforts. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. We have a lot of questions for you, but I also wanted to speak. I wanted you to speak a little bit of your current uh, position with ACLU, mm -hmm. um, and if you wanted to speak a little bit about that. So I uh, currently work with the um, ACLU um, Utah affiliate. I uh, manage their office and I also oversee their general volunteers. Um, and it's just an incredible chance. Um, it's a nonprofit, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, with this administration and the different approaches it has taken to different issues um, our work has just intensified and um, I'm just glad that I have an incredible team to learn from and to yeah. lean on and I know that the ACLU um, is fighting uh, for DACA and, and for us because there's there's a multiple DACA recipients working for the ACLU and different yeah. affiliates um, so I am just glad to be learning from a great group of people who really fight the good fight and they're teaching me how to do it so yeah that's awesome um i'm glad that you mentioned that you know you previously mentioned of working in a non-profit and what it is what it really comes down mm -hmm. to um and like the importance really just or how we organize and like how it impacts with even having such a small amount of resources yes yeah um i think that people forget that nonprofits don't get federal aid Mm -hmm. uh, we rely on charitable donations. We rely on people wanting to fight this with us, maybe not having the time to go and lobby yeah. with us, but just giving us the resources. And I think it's really important to emphasize that, um, that the job that you and all the team here are mm -hmm. doing, it comes with a price. But I think that you might agree with me that the price is worth it Definitely. if it makes a difference. Yeah, I but so. we also do need uh, people to donate to the cost, you know, because nothing's cheap. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, especially here um, nowadays, right? But, right. Um, but yeah, and I just kind of want to, you know, 
wrap this back up and like come back to to our main um you know our main topic advanced parole and the importance um a lot of the people that we've been that we've been working with here the people that have been applying like i mentioned a lot of them are for humanitarian yeah. purposes um but i know that there has also been a lot of like um studying abroad opportunities mm -hmm. and i can like speak for myself as well you know like when somebody comes into our classroom and says like hey we're planning this trip to italy we're planning this trip to france yeah. and it's like okay but <laughs> i can't go to it exactly. right so yeah. i don't know if you've ever had that experience before because i know you did get to study abroad but maybe mm -hmm. now with the situation now with the situation it, it it's it's happening more and more yeah. especially with friends you know abroad getting married and you know inviting you to their wedding and yeah. saying hey I can't go, guys, but this is great, you know, <laughs> Thank go you. right ahead. <laughs> um, right. And also for different, you know, maybe work opportunities that might yeah. arise, um, not being able to go, um, conferences that may happen yeah. and not being able to go to that. And, you know, like I said, as, as my studies in um, human rights law, mm -hmm. it's important for people in that field to go to conference and to be on top of what's happening yeah. and not having that chance it's a little bit frustrating and and yeah. it's really painful because it really puts us as a, at a as a disadvantage it is. and it really emphasizes how people and um and also this administration views us as different from other regular americans so. yeah that's very true because it's like everyone else um i know that other um like TPS holders yes. also, they mm -hmm. are able yeah. or were able to take advantage of advanced mm -hmm. parole as well. So I don't know, d what do you think? Why Why is it that only DACA recipients are affected with, with this? I honestly think that they think DACA is a thread to what we bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And especially with the current leaders that we have, yeah. they don't do well with threads. And so any <laughs> attempts to curve DACA or yeah. DREAMers they're going to see it as a win. Mm -hmm. But it's a really ironic way to look at it because it, they're not winning anything. We were still here. Exactly. With or without DACA, we're still here. Yeah. And you can't tell us that we're not as American as anybody else because we grew up here. Exactly. There's, that argument just doesn't fly with us. And even if DACA goes away, we're still going to be here. <laughs> and you can be sure as hell that there's going to be the fight of your life exactly. if DACA is rescinded, you know? Yeah. And people are going to fight for it because we have a lot at stake. And as long as that's the mentality and as long as they see us as, as a threat, they're going to mm -hmm. still attack us, but we're yeah. going to still fight back because that's just how it works. Yeah, 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 exactly. Because, I mean, overall, I, I believe, like, we're kind of we're sliding down on a, a different lane, but um, overall, I believe that, we, sh we all should have the same opportunity. Oh, sure. And I think that um, yeah. with DACA, DACA kind of just gave some people yeah. that relief. Yeah. Um, but, you know, hopefully somebody comes down and, like, gives us all, yeah. you know, everybody, including parents exactly. and whole family. But um, I, don't, I don't know if we have any more questions over here. Just uh, the same person that asked the question, she was like, thank you, just that I was told that to renew my DACA now before October 15, even though my DACA expires until June 2020. So. so, like I said, the decision can come between June and the recess of the court. So, um, I've, I've known from lawyers who have told me and several other dreamers to renew as soon as possible, just because also you have to think about processing times. A lot of the offices are backlogged, and I've heard of cases that are taking five to seven months to get the renewal. So, you know, it's up to you what you want to do, but honestly, I'm going to renew, and, um, you know, I'm willing to take the risk of losing a couple months just because I want to make sure that processing times and the uh, Supreme Court's decision doesn't necessarily affect me too much. So, either way. Okay. When when does your DACA expire? Uh, yeah. September 2020. Sept okay, and you're going to renew yeah. now? Uh, probably or? in January. Oh, wow. I'm okay. thinking. Okay, so it just kind of gives an idea mm -hmm. to some people. But I, I have heard the processing offices are, are just back backlog. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So one of the last comments, so um, I'm not sure if you already covered this, but why now, why advance parole? Many people are arguing, well, there's the whole DACA situation going on. Yep. Why are you all focusing on advance parole? Why is it needed? You know, can you give some comments on that? Because we have family members that are dying. <laughs> we have humanitarian need. We have work opportunities that are happening. And these opportunities and these situations are not going to happen again. 
we should be able to say goodbye to our loved ones we should be able to go for our dreams in our profession we should be able to go to conference if we need to to fulfill our work mm -hmm. responsibilities so this is not about why now it's about the fact that advanced parole should never have been rescinded yeah. and this is just a matter of humanity but also a matter of chance and you know you might say work opportunities or educational opportunities happen all the time they do not sometimes they're just very rare and you're very lucky to get them but yeah. most importantly if you lose a family member that you haven't seen in years you should be able to say goodbye to them exactly. it's just human decency to yeah. allow this to happen it really is um um there's another question you can oh, okay read. so we have another question it says Hi, Angelica. What are some of the best ways allies can support DACA recipients? Some of the best ways I would say to educate yourself, first of all, on who we are mm -hmm. and what our cause is. Because I cannot tell you the amount of times mm -hmm. people have asked me, what is DACA? What are dreamers? Educate yourself and educate people around you. Talk to your senators or congressmen. We yeah. are human beings. We are Americans. We deserve and we in some ways have earned the right to be here. And the fact that we were here from since we were children mm -hmm. doesn't make it our fault. We didn't make that decision. So educate yourself, talk to your congressman, and if you have the means, support us by a donation. Um, if not, then go to the police, um, protest, anything, speak up for us. Because we are people from minorities, people of color, mm -hmm. who are at, at a disadvantage. So if somebody who has a more privileged position is able to speak up for us, we have a higher chance of being heard. Yeah, thank you. And I think with that, we can um, conclude because mm -hmm. that's, I was gonna ask you, what would you tell somebody to yeah. have how, ways to get involved, right? I think that's really good. Um, and specifically for our campaign, like I mentioned, we are lacking resources. Please, yep. if you can, make a donation. The donate button is on this video. Um, and I think previously I had mentioned that her documentary was gonna be shown, but it's actually still in the works. So um, next time, we're also gonna be posting it on our social media. So um, if you do wanna watch it, please stay tuned with us so that you can see furthermore mm -hmm. of Angelica's story, um, her experiences abroad as well. Um, and I think with that, I just want to lastly mention that tomorrow is the last day to apply for to be our national campaign to restore DACA's advance parole. If you have the means to go, you, I would recommend that you go. You have to speak up with us. The louder we are, the the bigger the chance is that they hear us. So, it's something to consider is an opportunity of a lifetime. So, really if you have the means, do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it was a great experience. The mm -hmm. previous two times that we did it, it was really, really rewarding. Yeah. And we really did get a lot done during that, um, during those days. So that's pretty much it. Anything else that y'all wanted it, want to add in? No? No, thank you. I'm All right. Thank, thank you so thank much you for, for coming me, guys. from it's Utah so one more time. So oh. she traveled far. <laughs> oh, we're here in beautiful California. So it's great. California is the best. It is. It is, <laughs> truly. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time for our live edition. Thank you.